If you still haven't fully embraced Facebook to help grow your business or brand, don't despair because you still have time. So in this video, I'm going to give you five simple tips to get started on, and they're coming up right now. Hey there, Mark Warnkin here, your social media for business expert. And if this is your first time here, this YouTube channel is all about helping you grow your business or brand using LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a whole lot more. So hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with everything social media. I release videos just like this every week, and you definitely don't want to be missing out on them. Facebook for Business has been around for over 10 years now. But still, millions and millions of business owners and brands around the world haven't fully embraced the opportunity that it affords all of us. Now, the reasons people tell me that are things like, Mark, I don't have time, or I don't know what to do, or my customers aren't on Facebook. And I understand all of them, but they are just excuses that can't continue to go on because literally Facebook and the other social media platforms is increasingly where your customers and clients are going to find you information and that's where they want to be dealing with you when they go online these days. So in this video, I'm now going to give you five simple and easy tips to get started with on straight away. So if you're a beginner still with Facebook for Business, this is the video to watch, grab a pen and paper. Equally, if you already have a Facebook business page and you are already doing some good stuff, I know there will be some helpful information in this video as well. So let's go to some live screen action now where you can follow my mouse as we explore all of that. And it's coming up right now. So here we are on my Facebook page, Mark Warnkin, social media selling, one, two, three. Give me a thumbs up, give me a like, that way you can follow me here on Facebook as well. So tip number one for being successful on Facebook is to fully set up and optimize your Facebook page. Now, that might sound simple and it might sound obvious, but the vast majority of business owners and brands don't do this well enough. Now, I review Facebook pages pretty much every day and there's some very simple things that we can all be doing and all should be doing, but I see all too often these things are set up because we're living in an era where we need to stop the scroll, stopping the scroll, eye-catching images. When someone lands on your Facebook page, you literally have seconds to make a great first impression. So I've done everything correctly and I'm gonna run through these things with you. Banner image over here, um, customizable tabs here, watch video, and then when someone's onto my page, they can see lots of up-to-date and relevant content as well. So let's go through some of these bit by bit and you can um, tick them off as to see whether you've done them as well. Now, the first thing that you wanna make sure that you've done correctly is to have an eye-catching banner or cover image. It's the most visual part of your Facebook page and you wanna make sure that is bright, it is eye-catching, it has a benefit statement or it tells, the, the image tells exactly what you do without people having to sort of you know think too much this will go a long way to determining your success on facebook you can even make it a video now or even a slideshow where there are multiples but this is really really important that we get right equally your thumbnail for a lot of you it will be your business logo or a face of um, an image of yourself. Now, 80% of all views are on Facebook now are on a mobile device. So you wanna make sure that the cover image or the banner image is sized correctly for mobile because that's what people will be viewing. The vast majority of people will be viewing you on Facebook. We need to get, oh, sorry, on your mobile. We need to be getting this right because if we don't get it right, people will click off before they've even started to read and scroll down your page to see what you're all about. Now, some of the other areas in the about section, you might want to add your website with the HTTP www to make it a clickable link. You may want to rearrange the tabs on the left-hand side or the tabs appear here on mobile under here, the home, the about, that type of thing. Pin an eye-catching image to the top. Add your phone number, add your email address. Don't make it difficult for people to contact you. If you make it difficult for people to contact you, they will click off and the opportunity will be lost. All of that behind the scenes information here when you click on the About tab, all of this information, very simple, but I see all too often business owners and brands just still haven't done this most basic feature. 
And it's really important these days because your Facebook page is your website for so many people. And this may be the only contact someone has with you or your business or brand. So you don't want to leave it to chance where they see your Facebook page and go, look, it looks boring. It's not up to date. There's not much information. I'm going to click off. The opportunity will definitely be lost. Here's a couple of Facebook pages I've just screenshot. Look how eye-catching this one is, short stack. Look at all the um, tabs down the side here. Build beautiful contest giveaways and landing pages in a, stat, in a snap. I love what they've done. Kmart is a department store here in Australia. This was their Christmassy theme. Um, very simple. Again, look down the side. Um, and if you scroll on that page, there is lots and lots of information for you to have a look at. And it's important that we get it set correctly or set up correctly because these are the three different, I suppose, aspects when people see you on Facebook. This is the desktop version and this is the cover image here. On a iPad or a tablet, the cover image appears here, but on a mobile, look how small it is. 80% of all views on a mobile device, sorry, 80% of all views on Facebook are on a mobile device. So you want to make sure your customised banner image or cover image is sized correctly for mobile. Um, and this was a client that I work with, Specialised Finance Australia. See here on the left, see how the information is cut off. It was only after we got it sized correctly or I got it sized correctly for them. Now that it fits perfect for mobile device. It's really important we get that because otherwise people, uh, half the information's cut off. Look at that, the call to action now, the call now button was missing, opportunity will be lost. Facebook will tell you 828 times 315. That is the size of this whole area. But it's the grey shaded area. That's the mobile safe area. And I found that from trial and error, 851 times 475 pixels works best and that allows for cropping. And here was another example of my Facebook page when it wasn't sized correct for mobile. See the image over here on the left hand side, see how it was cut off. It was only over here on the right once I got it all sized correctly that all the information, the picture of me, the image of me was all centered correctly viewing on mobile. So it's really important we get this right. I do have some videos that I will put in the comment section below on how to do that in a little bit more details, how to create a Facebook page for business. Equally, which button works best? Selecting the, the right blue call to action button is really important, so I have a separate video on that. And equally, lastly, is your Facebook page size correctly for mobile? I do have a separate video on that one as well. As we move on to step number two, step number two is to be active every day with posting of great content. So we've set up our Facebook page, we now need to start posting, sharing business information about you, your business or brand funny information, helpful tips, information that you will um, you think will be relevant, informative, entertaining to the people that are following your page. And we can do that in a variety of ways. Now, all of that might sound easy and, and common sense, but lots and lots of people still struggle with knowing what to post, when to post, how to post, to actually grow, to make their Facebook page, you know, something that, you know, uh, people who are following their business or brand want to actually follow and go to for information. So there's a formula to it and there's some best practices that we can all learn and start to follow. Whenever you're posting anything online, remember this formula, image, headline, content. We need to stop the scroll. That means your image is 10 times more important than the headline. Your headline is 10 times more important than the content. Your content needs to be informative, entertaining, engaging and relevant. If we don't stop the scroll with an image and a headline, all of your efforts or the vast majority of your efforts on Facebook and all of the social media platforms will be a waste of time. And the content can be pictures, stats, quotes, thoughts, questions, videos. And the more you start thinking and the more you start being creative and following other pages, you'll come up with endless ideas and endless opportunities on what to post. Now, a posting strategy, maybe on a Monday, you could offer a promotion. Tuesday, maybe show a behind the scenes story of you in the business. Wednesday, some helpful tips. Thursday, highlight something about your business. Friday, share some industry news. Saturday, a story about you or staff, Sunday, a call to action, or even a buy now. Now, for some of you, you might be doing this already, but these are just some very simple, basic things to jot down to start inspiring you to be posting great content to your Facebook page. The objective is to get one of four engagements to happen. They are either a like, a comment, 
a click or a share. Every time we're posting on Facebook, the objective is to get a like, a comment, a click or a share. And the ultimate checklist, does your post tell your brand story? Does the post include an eye-catching image? Is your copy short and clear, the information, the wording? Does the post just have one main goal? Don't confuse people with lots of things to do. Generally, posts with one objective gets more engagement. Does your post educate, entertain or inspire? If your post asks a question, is it easy to answer? If your post includes a link, does it go to a specific page? Is it a native post, meaning a post directly uploaded to Facebook? Does it interrupt or fit in with people's daily cycle? If you saw this post, and this is a good one to finish up on, if you saw this post, would you like or comment or share? It's a good question. And I want you to write down yes or no, what you think of that question. As we move on to tip number three, tip number three is to start engaging with your local community and start liking and commenting, engaging on other pages. And you can do that in a fun way. You can do that as you, the individual, but equally you can start liking, and commenting and engaging as your own business page. Let me show how. You, let me show you how that actually works. So you can piggyback on the success of other Facebook pages by leaving and comments as your own Facebook page, not in a spammy way, but in a nice, polite, and complimentary way. And this is how it works. So you can actually like a page, and most of us have probably done that. But if you click the little three dots here, it brings you up an option, and you can like that page as your own business page. How good is that? How clever is that? So when you're engaging with other Facebook pages in your community or brands or anywhere around the world, you start leaving behind the calling card, not of your own personal name, but of the name of your local business or not your local business, of your business, of your business or your brand, which gives another opportunity for you to be seen in the wider Facebook community. Let me show you how that happens in real life on a Facebook page. So here's a Facebook page that I follow. It's the local community newspaper in the area that I li live here in Sydney. It's called the Sutherland Shire Leader. It's the local face um, it's the local community newspaper um, now I can like that as mark the individual just by clicking the like button over here but if I click on the three little dots it gives me an option and one of those options is to like as your page so I can now start liking and following and engaging on this local community um, Facebook page not as me the individual but as mark my business so it's going to give me an option and I can select which one of my pages that I would like to engage so I've now liked this page as Mark Warnkin, Social Media Selling 123. I've liked this page as my business. So it now gives me the option of when I'm scrolling down the news feed to see what they've been posting, a local soccer game last night, uh, local ground closures due to wet weathers. I can now like that page as Mark, but equally by clicking the little button over here, I can now like and engage as Mark Warnkin social media selling. So I could leave a nice gentle comment, yes. <clears throat> and, and you can see when you leave a comment like this person has done here and this person has done here, um, I can now like this comment, uh, this, this post as my page. So on this particular post about the council closing the sporting fields due to um, wet weather, I'm leaving a comment as it's ne it's a never ending issue on should councils close sporting fields to keep them or keep them open, isn't it? So when I press post, submit my comments, see the calling card that it's leaving behind. Mark Warren can social media selling one, two, three. So I haven't done it in a spammy way. I've just liked, I've commented, I've engaged in this particular Facebook page, but instead of it just leaving Mark the individual behind as the comment, it leaves Mark my Facebook page. So if someone does scroll over my page, it then gives them an opportunity to say, hey, who is this guy? Who's Mark Warren can social media selling one, two, three. This is a very simple thing that all of us can be doing on a daily basis, not in a spammy way, but you can be liking and engaging and commenting on other Facebook pages as your own Facebook business page. As we move on to tip number four to really focus on with Facebook for Business in 2020, and that is to create video content. That's right, video is the future of the online world. Video content is one of the most effective ways to help promote you, your business and brand. So if you scroll through my Facebook page and most other Facebook pages now, you will see video content is everywhere. I've got a blooper reel at the top of my Facebook page and I've pinned that one to the top just to show people that 
behind the scenes and some of the things that I get up to. I uploaded a, a video, a YouTube video, or, or sorry, I, I, the YouTube video link um, to my Facebook page this morning, uh, LinkedIn for Business 2020. That was another video I did in this series. Facebook won't particularly like this one because I've actually um, embedded the YouTube video link into the Facebook feed and they don't like that because when people click on this video, they actually then go to YouTube. It takes them off the, the platform. But I upload videos directly to Facebook. They call that a native video, but I equally sometimes put the YouTube link in as well. This is one I did a few days ago or a week or so ago. Social Media for Business 2020. This was a native video uploaded directly to Facebook and this is a general social media for business 2020. So video content very much is the future. So that's what I really want everyone to be focusing on. If you're wanting to grow your business or brand using Facebook or social media in general, video content is very much the future and at the forefront we all need to be focusing on. And a few other little things that I've done on my um, Facebook business page, if you click the video tab, you will then see all of my videos appear here for people to watch. My branding, it's all in one place. I've created playlists here on my Facebook page, YouTube for Business, Facebook for Business, LinkedIn. So people coming to my page, they can then engage with me, my business and brand by watching all of my videos. Down the bottom of the page, all of my videos are listed so people will say, hey, look, we like what Mark does. Let's open up the lines of communication with Mark. And this is one of the simplest and easiest ways that I'm able to generate leads and business or new clients for my business. People get to sample some of my video content. So having your video tab activated, uploading all of your videos only is going to help promote you, your business and brand. And this is the preferred medium that people would rather engage with you. Short, sharp, one minute, three minute, five minute, 10 minute video content is the future. And the third thing that I wanted to show everyone here is if I click on the YouTube tab. Now you might be thinking, Mark, how did you even get the YouTube tab on your Facebook page? I've customized a Twitter tab and a YouTube tab. So if someone clicks on the YouTube tab, again, brilliant, what it's going to do, it's going to show them all of my YouTube videos within my YouTube um, channel. So another way of just me going round and around in circles, promoting myself, my business and brand. So some tips on how to actually be creating good videos. Let me show you some of them and what they might be as well. Now you might be thinking now, Mark, okay, all of that sounds great, but how do we record and upload video content to Facebook? And what are some of the mistakes to avoid? These are the questions people ask me all the time. As I said before, almost 80% of all social media time is now spent on a mobile device and video is well and truly at the forefront of it. It's one of the most effective ways to promote you, your business and brand. And it can be really simple. It can be this simple to get started with video content, not only for your Facebook page, but across any of the platforms. And it can be as simple as recording simple two minute videos from your smartphone explaining who you are, what you do and how you help. There we go, that should be your first video that you'd be looking at putting on your Facebook page. Once it's on your Facebook page, you can then upload it to some of the other social media platforms as well. And I want you to upload your video directly to Facebook for greater organic reach. Now, what does that mean? YouTube and Facebook are arch enemies in the battle for eyeballs and time spent on their platform. So if you put a YouTube video onto your Facebook page, Facebook aren't, Facebook aren't necessarily going to like that. So they will very much suppress the organic reach. The organic reach meets meaning how many people will actually see that video. So the best practice is, is to upload your video directly to Facebook. So you're not copying and pasting a link, you're uploading the video directly to Facebook then it becomes a native Facebook video and they're more likely to share that out to your network. Um, if you do upload a YouTube video, they will still accept it, but they will very much you know, suppress how many people actually see the video. So they're arch enemies in the eyeballs. Um, television, going back decades, television was the medium. Now it's the social media platforms. YouTube and Facebook are competing every second of the day for the eyeballs. Some of the mistakes to avoid are sound quality. If people can't hear you, they will click off as soon as they've clicked on, equally with the lighting. If it's too light, too dark, too bright, no sound, 
people will click off. That's why in a lot of cases, 30% of people will click off within the first 10 seconds. If the background is too busy or too plain, um, if it's too busy in the background, it gets confusing and your message gets lost. Equally, standing against a, a blank white wall can be um, off-putting. Horizontal versus vertical. Horizontal is best, um, except if you're looking for Instagram, but they do have a place, but preferred on Facebook is the horizontal videos. Not using a tripod. Yes, you can just hold it in your hand to get started with, but if you're going to be shaky, get over a tripod or put it on some books or rest it on the desk because you don't want a shaky screen. And reading from a script with no eye contact. You don't want to come across as like a newsreader because you want to try and be a little bit natural. Just like this video I'm recording, there are some ums, there are some ahs, there are some pauses. We're living in an era where natural is best. Perfection is for dummies. Don't try and do perfect videos because you can't. It's the content be real, um, be genuine, and they're the type of videos that get more and more views. And at the end of it, make sure you have a call to action. Don't forget people to say to them, or don't forget to say, hey, subscribe to my Facebook, not subscribe, like my Facebook page. But if the video is on YouTube, say subscribe to my face, um, YouTube channel. Equally, if you're wanting them to pick up the call or if you're wanting them to send you a message, if you're wanting them to click the link, make sure you have a call to action. If you don't have a call to action, if you don't ask people to do something, they won't do anything and the opportunity will be lost. And here's a video that I uploaded directly to um, Facebook. I scheduled it as a premiere. Facebook then um, were promoting it as a premiere video. They sent out the message to people who were following my page. It counts down. So there is some really great simple things that Facebook are now really focusing on with video. And that was a screenshot of one of my videos that I just did um, a while back, how to schedule posts on Facebook. It listed it as a premiere, just creates a little bit of excitement. And they send the message out to everyone. More and more people then get the opportunity to start watching the video when it uploaded to my Facebook page. Which moves us on to step number five, tip number five on what you can be doing with your Facebook page as we enter 2020. And tip number five is all of this activity that we've been creating, I want to now see you be able to monetize that. If you're in business, nothing gets, nothing happens unless products and services are sold. Tip number five is how to make sales directly from your Facebook page. And it can be as simple as this. To make sales from your Facebook page, offer something for sale. Step number two in that is ask for the order. The vast majority, the vast majority of all business people who have a Facebook page aren't monetizing from their Facebook page because they never offer anything for sale and then they don't actually ask for an order. And it can be as simple as click this link to buy now, or it can be go to your website to buy now, or it can be pick up the phone and give us a call to buy now, message us to buy now. But unless you have something for people to actually buy from your Facebook page, and unless you pair that with a, 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 a an opportunity for them to click a link that says, you know, click here to buy now, they won't be able to buy anything. Now, I know that might seem overly simplistic, but I can guarantee you it's the fundamentals that we all do over and over again that make any of our efforts on social media worthwhile. Have something for people to buy have a call to action, click here to buy now, and it can be that simple to be making sales from your Facebook page. So there we go. Hopefully you found this video informative, entertaining, and helpful, and I have inspired you to take action with your Facebook business page. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Facebook and the other social media platforms these days, this is where your customers and clients would rather engage with you. They go to for information, entertainment and they actually even go there to buy and place orders all of that information as well so what i want you to do is um maybe in the comment section below put the link to your facebook page there i would love to check it out equally if you're watching this on youtube don't forget to hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with all of this video content also hopefully you're watching it on facebook give me a like there give me a thumbs up you can follow all of my information on facebook as well Mark Warnkin, Social Media Selling 123 signing off, and I look forward to seeing you again in another one of my videos real soon.